This is episode 11 with Fabiana Marie talking about making self-empowering choices. Hello, I hope wonderful things are happening for you today. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to spend with me and my incredible guest. Our conversation covers selfies, social media, breast cancer, essential oils, the impact of the choices we make, and much more. I look forward to sharing that with you in a moment. My friend Paige has a question for you first. If living your good life means doing work you love and making a difference, consider this. How can you do either if no one knows about what you do? Marketing is what gets your work into the lives of those you serve. Paige at Fruition Studio helps entrepreneurs use marketing to connect with customers and grow. Fruition Studio offers a full spectrum of email marketing, copywriting, and design services. You can find free tools and more at fruitionstudio.com. Paige is busy working on some new branding for the show, and I'm so excited to share it with you soon. She is so awesome. Also working very closely with our program is the folks over at Texas Media TV, where they do professional video, audio, and podcast production. Check it out at txmediatv.com. Keeping in touch with our friends and family has shifted so much over these last 10 years or so, due primarily to social media. In fact, today's guest and I met over 15 years ago and have stayed in touch only via Facebook. I've loved watching her family grow over the years and through her incredible photos, and I've seen her just blossom and thrive as time marches on. Her selfies are absolutely gorgeous, I'm telling you. Speaking of selfies, do you realize just how many selfies are posted each day on social media? Well, that's our trivia for the day, and I'll share the answer and a few more relevant social and business statistics about social media after our chat. How many selfies are posted each day? I'll tell you in just a bit. Well, I can't wait for you to meet her, so here we go. Today's guest was diagnosed at the age of 27 with breast cancer. She's endured over 150 rounds of chemotherapy, radiation, and a deteriorating kidney. She fights every day and has chosen to share her journey with the world through blogging and social media in the hopes of inspiring anyone facing adversity. She launched her first book in November of 2016. She's been a guest speaker at National Cancer Charity and fundraising events, as well as part of a national ad campaign for the Avon Walk for Breast Cancer. She's also an award-winning photographer, best-selling author and writer, and is a former model and entertainer. If that's not enough, along with her degree in liberal arts and business, she also holds certifications in raw, vegetarian, and vegan cuisine. I've looked at some of her recipes. They're amazing. And she's a certified holistic nutritionist and aromatherapy practitioner. Her company, I love the name, Fabulously Fighting LLC, is dedicated to helping others live through adversity through love, laughter, and honesty. Bringing her wealth of experience and information to encourage and inspire us today, please help me welcome Fabiana Marie. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. We've met like 15 years ago. We did some business together and we kept in touch over the years via Facebook, just kind of aware, but not necessarily spending a lot of time together. And so over time, I've just been watching you grow into this amazing human being. I've loved watching this journey. So it's great that we could kind of finally bring it back home and get back together. And we were chatting yesterday, kind of birthing this podcast episode, and we just kind of kept pinging and resonating on some different things. And I loved when we were talking about, well, what are we going to, you know, what are we going to focus on? What are we going to talk about? We both kind of came around the topic of choices and that's so huge, I think, in yeah. really building out your life and living the life that you want to live and making those trips happen to Hawaii or wherever. So what has brought you to that place or that realization? How did you get there? Everything to this point has been obviously quite a journey. I mean, living with metastatic breast cancer for 13 years, you don't survive 13 years without having that knowledge that everything in your life becomes a choice and becomes that choice to ultimately survive 
survive. It wasn't overnight. I mean, this has been a huge growth and journey coming this far. And ultimately, like you said, everything comes down to a choice in how we want to deal with things. And once I made that realization that creating my ideal life or creating these things in my life is ultimately a choice, that's when that switch happened. It was early on in my cancer diagnosis that I sought out kind of how to put one foot in front of the other. And I learned about the secret and I learned about living an abundant life. And I learned about all of these things that we manifest. But what it really comes down to is everything is a choice. Me being able to live for the past 13 years in a, metas- in a metastatic state, yes, has it been difficult? Yes, have I endured many things? Absolutely. But knowing that I can come back to the ideals of everything is a choice, going to gratitude when things are really rough, that's really what resonates with me. And like I said, it doesn't happen overnight. It's not that like, oh yeah, everything's sunshine and rainbows. And it's still not, but mm-hmm. I get to choose how I look at things. And how you respond. A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. And both of those are so critically important. What I do want to do is ask you about metastatic breast cancer. For those of us who don't quite understand what that is, can you explain just a little bit? My cancer obviously did not start as metastatic. Metastatic means that my breast cancer has essentially multiplied in my body. Okay. So I have tumors that are in my kidney. I have a tumor that lies on my brain. I have other tumors that are in my other breasts. So being metastatic means that, so a lot of people ask, so you have a brain tumor? No, I have a breast cancer tumor that is in my brain. It's kind of that differentiating, you know, really what it is. Yeah. Metastatic just means that, that basically it's moved to a different part, not moved, but multiplied into a different part of my body. I love um, looking on your website, which is fabulouslyfighting.com, by the way, and Fabulously Fighting. That's an amazing title. Uh, amazing. Well, it's so funny. Everybody asked me about that title and it was <laughs> it was not my choice of, of title for, for this. It was actually somebody that described how I was fighting to me. And she was like, oh my God, you are just fighting fabulously. And I looked at it and I was like, fabulously, breast cancer. Like, <laughs> I don't know if that's so fabulous, but it really wasn't about breast cancer. It was how I deal with it and how I, how I manifest every day and living fabulously is really what we're talking about. And you do, I mean, it fits perfectly. If you, if you follow on social media, you just, you, your photography is stunning. Your, your selfies are stunning. What I was (laughs) going to say is I love the title of this book on your website, Cancer is What I Have, Not Who I Am. Yeah, that was the first book that I actually put out and it only went out on Amazon. And it was actually a compilation of all of my write of all of my writings that I was doing. I was doing blog posts every Sunday and I still do to this day. I still every Sunday I put out a blog post that's about my life or about what I've been going through or maybe sometimes it's about somebody else, but or somebody else I love that I obviously feel very strongly about. So I will write about obviously what's going on in my life. So the first book that I put out was, yeah, cancer, cancer is not who I am. It's only what I, it's what I have mm-hmm. because so, so often you get pigeonholed with, well, she has cancer. Well, yeah, she has cancer, but I also do a whole lot more than just have cancer. <laughs> no, I mean, I know people who have debilitating and, and chronic illnesses and cancer diagnoses, and it takes a lot of effort just to keep up with that. I mean, I can understand why people People kind of get in that space where that's that's their job. For the first maybe five years of my diagnosis, so many people were like, I think you should see a therapist. I wasn't seeing a therapist. And people, you know, even doctors were like, I think you should go to a support group. And I think you should do this. And I think you should do that. And everybody had their, their opinions on how I should handle my own diagnosis. It wasn't until I took control and said, okay, I see a therapist now, but I see a therapist more for the me and my husband because it's a it's a huge strain to obviously be in the state that I have been in because not only do I have breast cancer but I also have an autoimmune disease which is lupus Mm -hmm. and so I have lupus flares which are are not you know they're not easy my day-to-day activities can range anywhere from me feeling like they can go 100 miles an hour to me being in bed all day and sometimes that's just how it goes but we sought out a therapist for us and yes do I see her as well 
yes, I do. We did it on our terms and I wanted to take control of, of how I wanted to do this, not how anybody else thought I should be doing this. How has that played out for you? From your perspective, from my perspective, you, it looks like you're going great. But from your perspective, how has that made a difference? You mean the therapy piece? No, the taking control. Oh, taking control. Once you have control, once you realize that you have control over your life, what a power that is. So many of us, and I think I heard this so many times from so many survivors and thrivers that, well, my, my doctor said I had to do this, or my doctor said I had to do that, or guess what? Doctors are not gods. We just hand over the reins to those doctors. And when I realized that I could do my homework and I could do a lot on my end is when things started to change for me, knowing that I could have that control and knowing that I could go into a doctor's office and say, no, I don't want to stop my vitamins. No, I don't want to do this. I would rather do this, or I've read this, or I've studied this, or you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. sometimes I butt heads with doctors. A lot of times I butt head with doctors. But trusting my gut and trusting that I had the knowledge is so powerful. It's so powerful to know that knowledge is power. And me learning all that I have for the past 13 years has given me almost my life. Because honestly, had I listened to these doctors, they kept telling me, well, we'll give you five years. Maybe we'll give you a couple more years. Maybe. We'll... And I'm, I kept thinking, you're going to give me that? No, I get to take that. This is my life. You're, you're, you're just speculating that I'm going to only live a couple more years. You're speculating at this point. When I realized that I held the key, that mm -hmm. was the key for me. And so were your doctors receptive? I had to realize that not everybody was going to agree with me yeah. and not everybody was going to see how I looked at things. And that's okay because ultimately that's their choice. But ultimately my life is my choice and how I want to live is my choice. So when I was told that I couldn't do vitamins uh, while on key, chemo because it's, you know, it, the chemotherapy suppresses the immune system. And then if you put vitamins on top of it, then, you know, they talk about that it fights against each other. Well, it couldn't be further from what I believe in. And honestly, every time I went in to see a doctor and my blood levels were okay to start yet another round of chemotherapy, I kept bringing all of this information like, Hey, I'm on a raw food diet. Hey, I'm doing, and I would have data and they would look at me like I had 14 heads. I had to look at it from their perspective. They know one thing. They know that it's black and white to them. There is no gray area. <laughs> they know what they know, which and they, they, they've correct. invested a lot of time and in in energy in, into knowing that. They do. And I'm not yeah. discrediting anything yeah. that a yeah. doctor says or does. All yeah. I know is that what is working for me and the knowledge that I have that I have done these past 13 years has led to this point and led to the fact that I am still thriving. And I'm still thriving with metastatic breast cancer which numerous doctors said I wouldn't be here five years. Wow. And it's been how long? 13. So more than double, more than double. Yeah, more than double. And you have an incredible, beautiful young daughter who is right about that age. I do. So yeah, my daughter Mackenzie was a year old when I was diagnosed. So actually she turns, she turns 15 in April. She's an incredible human being. I mean, she's just, she thrives so much in her life. And I mean, it's been amazing to be her mom and to watch watch her grow up. And I mean, here's the thing. Had I not had this mindset, I may have lived out my worst fear, which was yeah. to not see her grow to this age. Oh, isn't that amazing? That's just a beautiful story right there. I yeah. love this picture on your website uh, on the book page where she's uh, Mackenzie standing next <laughs> she to her. That's when she found my book. <laughs> <laughs> she's got this cute expression on her face. <laughs> Just adorable. Yeah, it was the first time we went into Barnes and Nobles and saw my book on the shelf. And her <laughs> face was like priceless. And I was like, okay, you need to do that again so I can do it. So you have really taken um, quite a journey professionally as well as personally. You are a photographer. How long have you been doing that? And what, what's that been like for you? So photography, I mean, photography, I really wasn't looking at it as that I was going to become more of a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. I knew that I needed an outlet creatively when things for me felt really just bad. Just, I was in, you know, when I was 
in a bad place or I knew I needed a creative outlet and photography for me was that. So Dave McKenzie and I would get in, a, get in the car and I would take my camera and we would just drive. We would drive all over the place and I would take photos of whatever. And then I started taking photos of other people and ultimately it's not, it's not really where I'm focusing my energy right now, but it is the thing that always brings me back to peace and serenity when I need it. Wonderful. Wonderful. And I, I mean, I see that on your website as, as a part of who you are and, and the photography that I've seen you post on social media is just fabulous. You've taken, from my perspective, everything that you've kind of maybe picked up along the way and, and are creating this whole new career for yourself that is really going to help so many people. You want to talk a little bit about Febcential Wellness? So I am a certified holistic and aromatherapy practitioner, and it has taken me this amount of time because I started, um, I was diagnosed in 2005 and probably in 2007 was when I first started some of my first classes. I, I really kind of jumped in with both feet and was like, oh, I need to learn as much as I can about the human body and how we can heal ourselves naturally. So I've just continued to take class after class after class. And I did it, you know, I did one class at a time and, you know, I've gotten to this level of now I'm a practitioner and I want to get to the doctor level. I'm continuing to take classes, but right now I'm taking on clients and really helping people with really what I've done for myself, which is encompassing the mind, body, and spirit in healing ailments, not just cancer. I'm not just looking at, yes, I know my site is about, is more about breast cancer, but it's really about wellness. It's the breast cancer that got me to this point in my life, but the wellness piece is what everybody needs to know, that it's not just what we put in our body, but it's what we're feeding our mind and the things that we're using on our bodies, because most of the time you can't even say what's in these products that we put on our bodies. Oh and gosh, it, yes. Right. It's horrible, you know, but people don't realize that because it's, it's so in our face all the time on commercials or this or that. Everything's the new best thing and the new best thing and the new best thing. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh Lord, can't we just go back to the basics? <laughs> <laughs> Like if we really thought about it, you know, essential oils have been around for, you know, thousands of years, you know, mm -hmm. this goes, this goes back thousands of years, but yet you say, you say essential oils to somebody and it's very foreign to them. And I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> well, it's becoming more and more mainstream and there's a lot is. of essential oils out there and a lot of different, you know, companies and all of that. So you're really trained in essential I am. oils. Yeah, I am. I'm very much trained on what essential oils do for your mind, body, and in spirit, for your health, your wellness. And I'm very trained in knowing what essential oils and how pure they need to be because a lot of a lot of people don't understand that for some of my clients, I have them ingest oils, but they need to be the most pure oils in order to ingest them because a lot of people are like, oh my God, you know, no, I can't ingest oils. Yes, you can if they're given in the right dose, if they're given in the right form. So essential oils can be so good for you, but you really need to to know your stuff before you jump in. Everybody thinks that they can go to their, you know, local wellness store and be like, oh yeah, these essential oils, but you have no idea really what they're cutting these essential oils with. And there are some that are, that can be very harmful if used improperly. And I think that's why they it's can. so important to have yeah. a professional. Correct. And what other people don't realize either is that they can be, some can be great for your pets and some can be severely harming to the point of death for your pets. I've had to educate a lot of people that I'm like, don't leave your essential oils out. So you've had some great success creating specific blends for people, right? So if somebody yes. has a specific yes. need, they can contact you and, and yes. you'll, you'll work so, your magic. So I had a woman reach out to me probably about a month ago and she's like, I have had bursitis. She is, she is, or was a can, well, she is a cancer survivor. And one of her surgeries left her with a bursitis in her shoulder to the point where she couldn't lift her shoulder above her head. And she was like, I just, just really at this point need this pain to subside a little. She wasn't looking for me to heal. She wasn't looking for me to take the pain completely away, but she's like, I 
need some relief. And I was like, okay. So I created the blend for her and which I had created for my dad who also had bursitis, who had amazing results with his bursitis. And I created a blend for her. I knew because here's the thing, when you, if you're coming to me as a client, I am also looking into number one, your medical background, number two, things that you're, you're intaking within your life, meaning vitamins, meaning supplements, all that type of stuff. So I'm not just being like, Hey, let me give you this oil. Not that oils, they don't, they don't contradict with anything else. Like you can be taking oils, but certain oils do certain things. So I had created this blend for her and I did want to, I made her aware that this takes a little bit of time to get into your system. And some people see results right away. Some people see results within a month. Some people say it takes a little bit longer. It just depends on number one, how you're using them, how often you're using them. So I put her on this regimen of oils and she called me back within five days Mm -hmm. and said, I can't believe the relief that I have received already. So she's already reordered and (laughs) she's like, I can't live without this stuff. It's kind of blown up because a lot of people obviously are entrusting me and I, you know, I'm working with MS patients right now. I'm working with breast cancer patients. I'm working with people that have anxiety and depression right now. So I feel honored and blessed and grateful that my path has led me here, but I'm so blessed that people are entrusting me with the knowledge that I have. Well, we are so blessed that you have decided you have chosen this path and that you, there, you're choosing to fight fabulously. I have two more questions for you. First one is to succinctly, you know, sum up, or if you're speaking to somebody who is maybe in a dark place or in a, in a place of indecision, what is the importance of making a choice? So here's the thing. The importance of making the choice means that you are authentically living, that you are living out who you are. So making that choice for yourself, you have to realize that it is a choice. It is a choice to be happy or to be sad. Yes, we all get sad. Of course. Do I cry? Yeah, I probably cry once a day, but I cry for various things. I have that choice to, at the end of my cry, say, thank you, God, for everything that you're doing in my life and going to the gratitude in that moment. So every challenge becomes an opportunity and we get to create those opportunities. And is it a choice? A hundred percent. My final question for you is what does living a good life mean to you? Living a good life means to me, and I'm going to go back to authentically living, living my true self and not feeling ashamed and uh, of who I am. Do we all make mistakes? Yes. But again, every challenge, every mistake is an opportunity for something else. So, so living the good life is knowing that I'm living authentically. Oh, I love that answer too. Great <laughs> job. Thank you so much for sharing your heart with us today, your journey and all of the helpful information. Uh, we really appreciate having you on. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. If you would like to check out what Fabiana Marie is doing, you can find her at fabulouslyfighting.com. If you want to follow her on social media to see all those great pictures that she's posting, <laughs> that, that all is on the bottom of your website. I see fabulouslyfighting.com. We really appreciate the opportunity to share this info with you. And again, Fabiana, thank you so much. Thank you. I didn't want to end that visit. And don't worry, after reconnecting, Fabiana and I have plans to talk again and hopefully collaborate on some things. I'll keep you posted on that. Be sure to check her out on Facebook. Add a little fabulousness to your daily feed. Now on to our trivia question. How many selfies are posted daily on social media? Well, my research says there are 93 million selfies each day, which would represent, by the way, 2,583,333 rolls of film. For those of you who know what that is. Yikes. We've become a little narcissistic, haven't we? Well, that may not be such a bad thing, according to Pamela Rutledge, the director of the nonprofit Media Psychology Research Center. She says... Posting high points in life increases confidence, empowerment, gratitude, and appreciation through mindfulness and the ability to visualize desired outcomes. I think that might be a little bit of Fabiana's secret weapon. So that's good news. Also, if you're working your business in the social media realm, you'll be glad to know that 80% of Instagram users follow at least one business and Over 200 million of them visit a business Instagram profile every day. 
So if you're in business, mind your Instagram profile. People are watching. Just to balance things out, one more interesting statistic. Did you know in the year 2015, there were more deaths from taking selfies than there were from shark attacks? Living the Good Life is made possible by our amazing sponsors, including Dr. Steph at Making Shifts Happen. Learn about Dr. Steph's finally pain-free coaching program at makingshiftshappen.com. This program is intended for entertainment purposes only and not to be construed as medical advice. Okay, my work here is done. Get out there, be selfie safe, and enjoy living the good life.